This is Mr. Bess, cheap and tank. <laughs> yeah! Eight months ago, we took the starter motor out, and that meant taking the engine out. So we thought we'd just check everything over while the engine was out to make sure everything was okay. And it was a good job we did, because everything wasn't okay. So here we are in the engine bay of my old shit. Uh, we're hoovering it out and cleaning it out, getting ready to put the new fuel pumps in. So we don't have to have the T72 barrels on the back anymore. And I spanned the gearbox the other day. And we've had so much luck with gearboxes lately, it was naturally, this one needs to be broken as well. So the main bearing on this one, unfortunately, is gone. Also, as you can see, there's about two and a half minutes worth of clutch material left as well. So it was actually worth pulling it apart because the clutch is absolutely knackered. So that's got to be done as well. This is never ending, yeah. Do you ever wish you never took something apart? Because here we are. Uh, obviously that's the bit that norm you normally see on the front of the gearbox and then that covers that. That's also in like pristine condition. That might have to be changed as well. <sighs> so it continues. So what we've got here is a scrap gearbox that's had many pieces stolen off of it before. Look at the meat on that clutch. And the bearing doesn't feel too bad either. Obviously you can hear bits of shin there jingling around in the clutch at the moment, so we'll get it off and we'll have a better feel, but I think this is prime and ready to be harvested. We're live, Dave. As, as you can see, the clutch is good. Considerably better than your one. Yeah, but. how that's happened. The bearing isn't quite so good. That's the easier way of doing it. So unfortunately that bearing has damaged this housing beyond repair as you can see that is I don't even need to put my finger on it you can see the size of that lip. So I'm gonna take the clutch plates out of it and hope that my housing is in slightly better condition. So as you can see on Chieftain, they're not actually automatic. This is a centrifugal clutch and it is a dry clutch. So yes, they are semi-automatic. So these are the plates that fly out. So I've unbolted these now. As you can see, this is the spring that holds them all in, in their segments. And then these entire segments, as you rev it up, fly out. And that's what engages your clutch for those of you that don't understand it. And that's the friction material. So you're, when you change the clutch on a Chieftain, all you do is change the friction material and all the ruined bearings. Great design. That's obviously something they suffer with because every single spare box we've got has a rumbly bearing. What do you reckon? The bearing in one piece or millions of pieces? Millions. I'd love to help. Oh. Doing such a good job. That's heavy. That's crap. That that bearing is the idle bearing. So when it's ticking over, that one's still taking, and it doesn't get oil. That's why they're knackered on all of them, isn't it? They're just packed with grease. So there's not even a grease nipple to refresh that with grease. So whatever you pack in there when you fit it is what you've got. That's your bearing. That's my bearing. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. 
That's what I have been doing. That's the one that's dead dry. I wonder if that's the what one is making the rumble. It's not going to be, is it? It's going to be that one. Mr. Rumble Rumble. But you look at the race for Mr. Rumble Rumble. Look, go on, take the camera then. You want me to take the camera? Mm. So, look at that for a race. I've seen smoother dirt bike tracks than that. Positive. If we change that race and bearing, that's fixed. Do we think that's the noisy bearing? Somewhere around there. That's tapered that way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's on. That was too easy. Mm. That was absolutely scored to shine. So we've took the, all the fuel pumps out, the low, what we call the belly tanks. Uh, this side is the main engine fuel pump. The other side, you've got the GUE, and you've got the auxiliary main engine fuel pump. I don't know why it needs three. Someone very clever will probably tell us why. Um, and we took them all out, got them all working, and cleaned the tanks. But the feed to the auxiliary second, the auxiliary main engine one, the power feed wasn't working. Uh, which is annoying, which should have got its power here from that cable. So we've traced the wiring back into the main box and can't really see where the problem is or the brake. So what we've done is do a quick repair. I'll just drill through the side of the box and run a feed to the power supply unit at the back, which actually lives on with the same, with the same live that it should originally live on. So we're just taking the power from a different place, but to do the same thing because it's going to be very difficult to get at all this in a minute we've put the engine in. And uh, what else do we need to do? Does that mean the uh, fuel control module is going to work? It means there's a good chance that the fuel control unit will be on fire in this tank. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to seal it back up with the old hot glue gun because I'd hate for water to get in here and not be able to get back out. It's nice you've got glue the same colour as the cable. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Snap-on glue, that is. It's cute.
Hello, there, Jackie. So it took us two hours to find two little dowels that have been misplaced, but we're, we're back on track now. We're all finding the dandy. My hay fever's gone away. None of us are any fr friends anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's a million and ten degrees in the workshop today with the fans on. Otherwise, life could be better. No. Oh. Right, so that's amazingly it. This is all the Cheetons running and working, ready for Operation Market Hybrid. Except for uh, the gearbox on concrete, we've still got no second gear. So next week in between jobs, I'm gonna have a little look at that. Hopefully we can mend that without taking the gearbox off, out. I don't have time to take the gearbox out and do anything more to that if it needs more. So we'll take it either way with second gear missing. 
but hopefully it's just a, a valve stuck in the gearbox. And that will be all of our fleet of chieftains ready. So it's just a case of all the other little vehicles that we need to just get sorted, like the Foden, the Mercedes, the Rios, and everything else. Oh, and the bath. So the next thing we've got to do is the bath. Fuel tank and gear rods. That will be next week's video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'm going to bed. Idiot. You can walk through it now.